Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. I don't hang out on the forums. I never read a record review of something I'm going to review. I don't want to read anybody else's opinion before I do it. But I've gotten some emails from people telling me that there's somewhat of a mini controversy uh, floating around the Marquee Moon reissue that Rhino did recently, the High Fidelity series that just came out. And there's the discussion is, which sounds better, the original pressing or the reissue? That's not the right question to ask, because these two pressings, it's not that one sounds better than the other, they sound completely different, totally different. How can that be? Well, first, we have to go back and look at how the album was recorded. So Marquee Moon was recorded at A&R Studios. A&R Studios is, uh, was Phil Ramone's studio at that point. And of course, that's where uh, Getz Gilberto was recorded. It's where um, Dionne Warwick's uh, Make Way for Dionne Warwick, but a great recording was recorded. You could, you could name 50 fantastic recordings done at A&R that Phil Ramone owned. But Phil Ramone didn't engineer that record, Marky Moon. It was engineered by Andy Johns, another great engineer. Andy Johns knew how to record rock groups. So you had a great studio, a great recording engineer, and it was mastered at Sterling Sound. The credits on the record say Lee Hulko and Greg Calby. So with that team doing it, what came out on the original pressing, which is right here, was not an accident. It was not a mistake. It was not like, oh, they recorded it in a garage and, you know, some, some yokel uh, master that didn't know what he was doing uh, and we have to fix that when we do redo it. No, it was purposely recorded at a great studio with a great engineer and mixed by a great mix. I'm Andy Johns mixed it, I'm sure. And mastered at the premier mastering house in the country at that point. Probably that, probably Sterling. And... Uh, and the Mastering Lab in California were the two big places, probably some other good places, but those were the two main ones in America. So I don't think what was on Marquee Moon on the original pressing was a mistake, okay? That's my opinion. So Rhino reissued it and sent the tape to Kevin Gray, great mastering engineer with a great uh, mastering play, coherent sound, great coherent audio. Uh, and here is a picture of the tape that Rhino gives you in their gatefold reissue, which has also really good notes inside, pictures of television. By the way, I opened for television. I did stand-up comedy in Boston at the Paradise Club opening for television. That's a whole nother story that I will not tell you because I know some people are sick of my stories, some people like them, but I want to talk about this album, not, not my stories. So Kevin got the tape, and Kevin really did not know anything about uh, Marquee Moon. That's not his kind of music. He didn't know anything about it. So uh, what happened, I'm sure, is Kevin put the tape up on his machine and listened to it and heard a very, very good recording. Obviously a good recording. Andy Johns recorded it at A&R Studios. So the tape must have sounded great. He put it up on his machine and he did his thing, cleaned it up here and there and cut the lacquers. And lo and behold, what came out is a great sounding reissue. This is a great sounding reissue. You listen to this reissue, you will hear the drums as you didn't hear them on the original. You will hear the bass as you didn't hear it on the original. You will hear the cymbal hits as you didn't hear it on the original. You will hear uh, Richard Lloyd's guitar work cleaner than on the original because at the frequency range where uh, his guitar was on the original, it's kind of like missing in action. So you'll hear that. It's a the reissue is a well-ordered, cookie-cutter, great-sounding, late 70s rock record with all the oomph and the guts that you would ever want to hear. It's fantastic, but I don't think it's what Tom Verlaine wanted. I don't think it represents what he was looking for, which was that the jingle-jangle chiming guitar that he had. The sound of his guitar in the original is amazing. It just floats you into space. And if you want to, you know, I'm not reviewing the music here because if you want to read a great essay about that record, about Marquee Moon, go to Tracking Angle. I'm going to put up 
the uh, the URL right here and read uh, Joe Washak's coverage of punk rock in general and Marquee Moon specifically. It's really, really good. I'm so proud of having him writing for me and, ha- and that piece that he wrote. So, I think that's what the record's supposed to sound like. And, and I think that Kevin's sounds better, quote-unquote, but it misses the mark. It's not what the record is supposed to sound like at all based upon how it was originally produced and what the original sounds like. And while I'm on this semi-rant, the big problem we have right now is nobody's in charge. Now, when Joe Harley goes over to Kevin's and brings Blue Note tapes and they cut them together, Joe knows what he wants. Joe knows the originals. Joe knows the history. Joe gets what he wants from Kevin. And the two of them work together and you hear those fantastic tone poet reissues. But so many other reissues are not done that way. That's why the Tom Waits records sound terrible. Terrible. The files sound good. Chris Bellman digitized with Tom and Kathleen there. The files online sound great. The records sound horrible. If you heard an original Swordfish Trombones and heard this reissue that came out, and then Rudy Ryu saying it sounds really good, that's nonsense. It's BS. It sounds terrible. Terrible. Not even like, okay, it's terrible. Why does that happen? Nobody is in charge. Nobody's paying attention. I don't know. I don't know how that happens. I mean, the, the Steely, early Steely Dan ones, not that good. The new Gaucho that just came out, it's pretty good. Not as good as other things, but pretty good. I don't know. Maybe, maybe screaming and yelling about it got it to be better. It's not bad. Not as good as, I don't think it's going to be as good as what we're going to get on the super expensive one, but it's better. The early ones sound pretty bad because no one's in charge. Uh, the Who records. I don't understand these Who reissues. They're terrible. I just played Empty Glass, which is a really interesting Peter Townsend record. I have an original. It sounds really good. It's three-dimensional. It's got dynamics. The reissue is squashed to death. It's so stupid. It's got no dynamics. It's completely flat. It's dead. Why does Pete Townsend let that happen? I don't understand. I don't understand. He used to care about sound. I mean, Rough Mix was mastered by Doug Sachs. Pete Townsend used to take his stuff to Doug Sachs to master, and make, and they were great sounding records. All of these Who reissues, and I know there's some places where they say they sound really good. They don't. They suck. Who's next? Sucks. Rough Mix sucks. They're terrible. Why? Nobody's in charge. I don't know why Pete Townsend lets this happen. Why he lets him get squashed. I don't know, but it happens. I don't know. Anyway, I'm done ranting. I've had my rant, and I'm telling you that uh, this reissue, this Marquee Moon, Rhino did a very good job of putting out a fine-sounding, late 70s, well-recorded rock reissue. If you care about really good sound, you'll get it. It sounds great. If you care about really great guitar album sound, as originally intended, I think you have to find an original. It's not an audiophile uh, release. It's a great sounding musical release. And I just think going forward, we need more control over these reissues. We need people to do the homework and figure out what was intended when a record came out. Was it a mistake? Like on the Beatle records, okay, you could, you could say the early Beatle albums had no bass, and they didn't, and we know why. Because to make them playable on kitty phonographs, they had to cut the bass. That's not what was really intended. Same with the Blue Notes. Original Blue Notes are compressed and don't have much bass. They have mid-bass because they would jump out of the grooves of the turntables of the people who originally bought them. If that's the Rudy Van Gelder sound you think he meant, he didn't mean that. But anyway, I don't want to get into that argument. That's another argument. I'm just telling you, I'll just conclude by saying uh, this Marquee Moon, this reissue that Rhino did, sounds great. But I don't think it's what Tom Verlaine would have wanted. I don't know. He's dead. We can't ask him. Okay? Thanks for listening, and la-di-da.